Hello everyone, my name is Prab Nair and I'm working as a chief instructor at InfoSec Training. Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about some exam questions or some practice questions of Domain 2 of Certified in Cyber Security which is a foundation exam of IC Square. Domain 2 is all about business continuity and incident response and in this video I'm going to discuss some questions which is mapped with this concept. Along with that some snacks is also there which clear your doubts regarding a BCP, DR and incident response. My name is Prab Nair and for more information you can check my LinkedIn profile. And if you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Okay, so first coffee shot. Which, what is the most important factor that need to be considered? while finalizing the organization recovery strategy? It's a very good question. It means we are in a stage of finalizing a strategy and uh, for finalizing what is the most important thing we have so option a conduct the bia and prioritize the requirement definitely bia is one of the most important component we have for the bcp second is finalizing a resource until unless we don't identify what is critical and what is not we cannot finalize the resource c is bu review business requirement definitely but that is more like an input where we just understand the things and d is basically called as a review legal and regulatory requirement actually reviewing the business requirement and review regulatory requirement we can do in the bia and based on a bia only we can able to finalize the resource that is why i'm going with the answer a for alpha so let's see whether it's a right answer yes exactly that is basically the right answer so before moving to the next coffee shot i would like to explain you how the bcp works in the organization and if you want a detailed information about that, so there in the description box, I have already shared a BCP video. Coffee without snack is not good. So that is why this is the snacks for you. So when you're talking about overall BCP process, the first step in the BCP process is develop the policy. Because any kind of a system you want to introduce, you need to know the policy first. And policy is the foundation of any organization foundation of any system so we need a policy which talk about why we need a contingency in the organization then the second thing we do bia definitely in the case of any kind of a disaster and all that it is not possible for me to protect everything but during a consideration of protect everything i don't want to miss the critical thing so what is important what is most most important for an organization that need to be protect first and that comes from a bia the third thing we do preventative control we try to mitigate some of the risk if possible with the help of control okay and after implementing control some risk is basically left that risk is become the scope of the contingency strategy based on a contingency strategy we submit that plan for an approval to the management and after that after that we basically develop the contingency plan once we get an approval from the management okay these are the resources are required then we basically test the plan, we train the people on that particular plan and finally we have a plan and maintenance. So this is the overall steps we have which we follow in the BCP. Remember something, after BI only we mitigate some of the risk and after that only we basically go for the contingency strategy. Once we have a contingency strategy in place, we need to submit the strategy, draft strategy to the management for an approval because without approvals strategy is ineffective. And once we have approval, then based on that, we prepare the overall plan. Then we update the plan. Then we train the people how to use the plan and then we maintain the plan. So this is basically the overall process we have for the BCP. So this is the small snacks. So let's go back to the another coffee shot. Okay. So user receive an email from someone outside the company inquiring about company upcoming new launch and business migration. The user has a detailed specification sheet, but it's a confidential on it. The next the user should do which of the following question talking about user receive an email from someone outside the company inquiring about the company upcoming new launch and business migration. Okay. And this user has a detailed specification sheet. So example, like we receive some emails and all that, right? So sometimes it is also phishing email. So what user should do next? That's the most important thing we 
So the first step is basically call the help desk or the incident response team to find out what to do next. Option B, respond to the requester to find out how to reach them, then call them. Definitely I'm not going to do that until and as I will not verify. Reject the request might be it is actually an official call. And option D is inform the department hall the product. See, I don't have authority. So first thing that I will notify this kind of an email comes might be it is a phishing email which want my information. So that is something I will do first. That's why the answer is A. Always remember whenever as an incident is also reported, we need to confirm the incident. And whenever this kind of a suspicious activity happen or it's a normal activity, we first raise the ticket. We request the incident management team. Uh, this kind of a thing happens. Do let us know what need to be do next. Is it clear? So in this case, it was suspicious phishing attempt. So that's why we have basically reached the incident response team to provide the information. Might be it is a it, it is basically a normal call. But first thing we need to notify this kind of an email come shall we proceed with that particular activity. That's why the answer is A for alpha. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Okay, which of the following is the best carry out immediately? after a security breach is discovered in the database security breach means anything which goes against the organization objective option a risk management see risk management is definitely a best process okay but question talking about immediately configuration management is an outcome like post breach whenever we introduce necessary control it should be compliance with that so in that case we go for the b and if you want to introduce any kind of a change after the breach, you want to modify the control, you need a change management. But the first thing, the best to be carried out immediately after the security breach is basically incident management because ultimate goal of the incident management is to reduce the impact. So that's why the answer is D. So security breach occur, we raise the ticket by the change management. Change management includes the risk management process by systematic way, they implement the control. Here the question talking about the best carried out immediately, that's why the answer is D for Delta. Let's move to the next coffee shot. So question is, what is the primary goal of the incident management team in the organization? See, we have a two type of team. Okay, one is called as an incident management team and under which we also have a problem management team. So the incident management team, their goal is to restore the incidents or restore the system and problem management team is to track the root cause. Now, when we're talking about incident, we have an incident here and we have an event. Now, what is the thin line difference? Incident is basically all about thing goes against the business objective. Whereas the event is basically a series of activity used to achieve the business objective. Example like 6.30, I want to start a session. I am able to start the session by 6.30, that is an event. But it exceeds by 6.35, it is called as an incident. So here the question is, what is the primary goal of the incident management team? Option A, reduce the impact and restore services, which makes sense. Option B, gathering and analyzing information. That is not a primary goal. That is one of the process. So be removed. Role and responsibility for IR team person in each incident type. Uh, that is one of the function of incident management plan. And it's part of a plan. And D is conducting a test and exercise of the plan. That is also a goal, but that is not a primary goal. So ultimate goal is to basically go by A, A for alpha, reduce the impact and restore the services. And how they do that? By gathering the requirement, by having an effective roles and responsibility and make sure they can able to test and exercise the plan on a regular basis. That's why the answer is A for alpha. Let's go to the next question. Thank you. Alice is an information security manager working in an organization. His team receive an incident ticket from the operation team regarding one system is infected with the major virus. What will be the first step of the team to handle the situation? Option A, finding a root cause, makes sense. Option B, report to senior management, makes sense. Confirm and validate all the details associated with the ticket, makes sense. And D is disconnect. See, question has a keyword called first step. That is the first, the first thing. Second is, Alice is an information security manager working in the organization. His team received the incident ticket. Okay, so always remember whenever we receive the incident ticket, we don't take any action until unless we confirm because sometimes what happens when user report that as an incident might be it's not an incident, it's just an error. Okay, so first step is basically confirm and validate by asking some questions. And if it's actually confirmed, then we report to the senior management if it's critical. Then we basically disconnect and then finding the root cause. So that is why the answer is C for Charlie. So always remember the first step whenever we receive a ticket is confirm and validate the incident. 
suppose tomorrow accidentally network cable was removed so user report that as an incident so after having some questions and all that we got the clarity that is not an incident and sometimes they got this information if we raise this incident the team will work effectively on that so in that case they report a false positive also and actually it is not their mistake because during a security awareness training we guide them through that manner okay so more incident we report more visibility we get and by which we can able to reduce the impact and that is the success factor of security awareness training increase in the incident report and decrease in a security violation that's why the first step is always confirm and validate the ticket let's move to the next question before moving to the next coffee shot i would like to discuss some snacks of incident management process see in the exam you might get the question based on a cbk which is a guideline of ic square or you might get the question based on a nist which is a primary standard which ic square used to build the uh, uh, build the questions or make the syllabus and all that so that is why i have covered both so if you go by the cbk base the first step is called as a detection okay and we have a different way to detect the incident like system was infected with a virus so antivirus detect user has reported the incident that is also detection then second is basically called as a response response is basically mean when we receive a ticket as a incident management team and we ask some question to confirm the ticket and then we prioritize because we receive every day 100 tickets it is not possible for me to give attention to all the 100 tickets so we will basically try to understand the urgency and impact of that particular ticket and based on that i will try to prioritize let's take an example we receive a ticket system is infected with the virus but that system does not have any data but we have a system too which is infected with the ransomware and it has a sensor data so first thing is that we mitigate mitigate how isolate a system immediately from the network by which we can able to reduce the further damage and then we inform our management about this ransomware then we basically restore the backup and restore the system back to the state so thin line difference between mitigation and restore is mitigation is more like a corrective action it is same like you know if you are infected with the covid and all that isolate yourself from a family is a temporary solution you can do and recovery is like 14 days recovery for your treatment for more detail about the incident management also i have covered one video so in the description box i can share that then we basically do the remediation remediation mean to understand how the ransomware basically attack my server just to make sure it should not be happen again and this is basically where we involve the problem management and last is basically called as a lesson learn lesson learn is basically mean what is a le- lesson we have learned from this incident by which we can able to improve my incident response process so same week we have a nist base so in the nist detection analysis we have which is a combination of detection response then we have a containment here we have a mitigating reporting restoring then we have a eradication which is a combination recovery and remediation <clears throat> and finally we have a lesson learn which is part of the post incident recovery so let's go by the coffee shot to get the better visibility so at which particular stage of the incident management process we do following what remove the system from the network update the firewall to reduce the impact and move system to quarantine so if you can see all the three activities are the temporary activities so option a mitigation option b remediation sorry option b reporting option c remediation and option d lesson learn see lesson learn we have removed because we still dealing with the incident uh reporting before reporting because these are the activities not part of a reporting so b removed so we left with a and c remediation is basically a permanent solution and mitigation is a temporary so removing a system from the network that is a temporary update the firewall to reduce the impact that is a temporary move system to quarantine that is also temporary so the close option is basically a for alpha mitigation so if i go back to the same slide you can see mitigation basically mean fix temporary where the remediation is basically or re- recovery is basically the permanent solution okay so let's move to the next coffee shot it's a very good coffee shot what is the most important parameter to consider while categorizing and prioritizing an incident okay option a impact and criticality makes sense impact criticality is called as urgency confidentiality integrity but what about availability sensitivity availability what about the integrity authenticity and visibility so the close option is basically called as a a impact and criticality which is a combination of anything so the effect of incident has on operation 
that is basically called as a criticality slash you can say impact and the time frame in which the incident must be resolved to avoid the unacceptable impact that is called as a urgency so impact and criticality play a very important role or impact and urgency play a very important role to prioritize the incident is it clear which is part of a triage phase okay which cover your confidentiality sensitivity authenticity and all that let's move to the next coffee shot so question is neha member of finance department at a large corporation has submitted an incident ticket regarding a data breach to the information security the company is acquiring the incident response and forensic assistance from a managed security service to understand the data breach what is the first step need to be considered from managing the incident option a remove the system from the network makes sense we can do that inform the customer about the data breach are a customer itself uh, got affected okay option c validate and confirm the incident first and option d inform again i'm telling you the question document first step to deal with managing situation so before taking a b or d which is a business impact decision first we need to confirm might be it is not a true so that is where the answer is c for charlie validate and confirm the incident first and then we'll take a further action okay let's move to the next coffee shot okay very good question after the production outage which of the following document contain the detailed information on the order in which system should be restored okay option a succession planning see succession planning is a very high level plan okay which include everything option b disaster recovery plan makes sense because dr basically talk about what is critical and non critical because bia inputs will be feed into drp plan and that is a plan has been given to everyone based on the plan only they prioritize a the resource option c information security plan we don't include the re restoration parameter in the information security plan it is all about the isms charter and finally we have a chain management plan which is follow the chain management process so only close option is basically called as a b disaster recovery plan so bcp is the umbrella which deal with sustaining of the business and dr is basically plan which deal with it how to restore the it service in the case of disaster let's move to the next coffee shot a network administrator has purchased two devices that will act as a failover for each other it mean we have a device one and we have a device two both are basically work together providing a services if one device is down the load switch to two and from there we continue okay so which of the following concept does this best illustrate definitely not authentication because authentication is all about asking credentials and all that integrity is a state of data confidentiality is a state of information which should be available to only authorized people this option is more like a availability why we having a two servers or why we having a two systems in place or two device in place if one device is fail we have another device by which we can able to continue the services so service must be available whenever it required that's why the answer is d for delta availability let's move to the next coffee shot thank you okay security professional has just finished the bia for their company okay bi stand for business impact analysis what would be the next step for the professional option a prepare and publish prepare the policy publish on the website but that is something we do first before even bi we do the B policy first option b select and form the team but before bi we form the team remember we discuss the steps option c prepare and select the recovery strategy and option d test the plan d definitely removed so if i go back to the same uh, bcp process you get a better visibility so this is the bcp process we have if you can see that develop the policies are first then we do bia then we and forming the team and everything part of the first step only and team is the one who does the bia and then once the bi done we get the visibility what is critical what is not critical we create a contingency strategy so here the question talking about a security professional has just finished the bia so answer is basically c prepare and select the recovery strategy that is the first thing then we submit the strategy to the management for an approval and then we amend in the plan and then we test the plan that's why the answer is c for charlie okay always remember whenever there is a major change happen in the business we do bia whenever there is need to be update the bcp the first thing we do bia annually we need to perform bia on our business process so bia is a important tool by which we can able to prepare the recovery strategy and bia is the most important element we have in the bcp 
लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट कॉफी शॉट वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन विच आर द फॉलोइंग प्रोसेस प्राइमरी प्रोवाइड द जस्टिफिकेशन फॉर द बिजनेस कंटिन्यूटी प्लान एंड इट्स रिक्वायरमेंट ऑप्शन ए बी आई ए ऑप्शन बी चेंज मैनेजमेंट ऑप्शन सी कॉन्फिगरेशन मैनेजमेंट ऑप्शन डी रिलीज मैनेजमेंट नो स्कोप ऑफ द क्वेश्चन इज बिजनेस कंटिन्यूटी प्लान रिक्वायरमेंट ओके एंड विच आर द फॉलोइंग प्रोसेस प्राइमरी प्रोवाइड जस्टिफिकेशन फॉर बी सी पी चेंज मैनेजमेंट विल कम इन टू द पिक्चर वैन वी मेजरली इंट्रोड्यूस एनी चेंजेस कॉन्फिगरेशन मैनेजमेंट इज पार्ट ऑफ अ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड रिलीज मैनेजमेंट इज ऑल अबाउट रिलीजिंग अ रिसोर्स और रिलीजिंग अ पैच सो ओनली क्लोज ऑप्शन इज लेफ्ट इज कॉल्ड एज अ बी आई ए बिकॉज बेज ऑन अ बी आई ओनली वी प्रायोरटाइज द रिकवरी स्ट्रैटेजी दैट्स फॉर द आंसर इज ए फॉर एल्फा लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट कॉफी शॉट थैंक यू सो क्वेश्चन इज विच साइट इज मोस्ट एक्सपेंसिव एंड एक्सटेंसिव आई टी रिस्क मिटिगेशन स्ट्रैटेजी सी बेज ऑन अ बी आई ए वी प्रिपेयरिंग अ रिकवरी स्ट्रैटेजी रिकवरी स्ट्रैटेजी इज बेसिकली इंक्लूड द टाइप ऑफ साइट बिकॉज इफ माई प्राइमरी साइट इज डाउन वी नीड अ ऑल्टरनेट साइट बट द क्वेश्चन इज वॉट काइंड ऑफ अ साइट क्वेश्चन हैज अ की वर्ड कॉल एक्सपेंसिव एंड एक्सटेंसिव सो इफ यू गो बाय द कोल्ड साइट कोल्ड साइट हैव नथिंग ओनली वॉटर एंड पावर वॉम साइट बेसिकली हैविंग अ सर्वर ओके Even sometimes partial server or no server, but in the hot side we have a server but no data. Okay, mirror side is basically mean data, server, everything on one location and data, server and everything on the second location. So whatever the investment we doing in the primary side, same investment we have to do in the secondary side. So out of following, the most expensive is basically called as a mirror side. Okay. Definitely, when you're looking for the higher availability, you need to invest more capital. And if you're looking for the lowest availability, you can invest your capital. Based on the BI only, we get the understanding how many business need to be moved to mirror side, hot side, warm side, and cold side. Okay, so cold side demand the lowest availability, where the mirror side demand the highest availability. Always remember. Okay, let's move to the next coffee shot. What is the true statement regarding the primary difference between the mirror side and hot side? Option A, identical configuration, different. Okay. Option B, same configuration, same data, which is definitely not true because thin line difference in mirror and hot side is hot side have a configuration, server, no data, but mirror side have a configuration and data. Option C, hot side is active, active, mirror side is active, passive, which is not true. It's reverse. Hot side configure with no server, where the mirror side configure with only active server. Hot side has a server, so D remote. So only option is basically left is A. Identical configuration is different. So between both the configuration is different because in a mirror side everything is mirror of the primary side, where the hot side does not have any data. They only have a server. That's why the answer is basically A for alpha. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Thank you. Very good question. Which side? required the longest recovery time for business it mean which uh, side will take more time to recover if you take example mobile site it has a server and everything which can be movable from one location to other location it has a server hot site has a server but no data so if you move the data the site can be operational warm site have a infrastructure but no server we just need to move server and data and make it operational cold side have nothing we need to build network there then we need to build power then server so cold side out of all the thing will take more time because everything we need to move there cold side is very cost effective when it comes to maintenance okay but it demand the longest recovery time that's why the answer is d for delta because if you go by the mobile side we just have a server we need to move data so it take less time in hot side server is there we just need to move data which take less time warm side we just need to move date system and uh, data plug and play and we can move but in the cold side everything we need to build so that is the time it take which is a time consuming activity that's why the answer is d for delta let's move to the next coffee shot thank you okay so which of the following statement define mtd mtd is stand for maximum tolerable downtime option a the amount of time mission business process can be disrupted okay without causing a significant harm to the organization mission makes sense so the, actually if it take example in bia we have a three statement mtd rto and rpo mtd is determined by the data owner system owner business owner you can say it because they are the a uh, final authority who decide what is the level of loss they going to bear so you can say they are the one who define the risk appetite so if i say 
they are okay to lose four hour data oh, sorry they are okay to lose four hour operation so it was their authority so that is the mtd so four hour they will not say anything so my role as an operation is to make sure within that four hour i need to restore because if it exceed by four hour one minute for that one minute they need to pay the loss and they will face the loss so mtd is all about the acceptable downtime that is agreed with the business owner and their associate client and that is the same thing mentioned here the amount of time a mission business process can be disrupted without causing a significant harm to the organization mission option b over a length of time the information system component can be in a recovery phase before negatively impacting organization mission or business process so that is the definition of rto rto is basically time you take to restore the services so if i say mtd is 4 hour your rto should be 3 hour or 3 hour 30 minutes in which i need to restore if it basically exceed the 4 hour then there is no point a good bcp plan is a one where the rto should be less than mtd okay i purchase a time from you i bought a time for you for 4 hour that is a mtd within that 4 hour i need to restore that is my rto okay so option c is the point in time which data must be recover after an outage okay so this is the definition of rpo recovery point objective it mean acceptable data loss in the case of disaster so if you take example uh, the client was agree on 2 hour 2 hour data loss so example 7 am i will take a first backup which is called as a version 1.1 9 am i will take another backup which is called version 1.2 11 am i am taking a backup version 1.3 but 11:15 the server was down when i restore 3 pm the last data i restore is 1.3 So in this case, the data loss of 15 minutes, and what is the maximum we have agreed is two hours. So RPO is all about the acceptable data loss in the case of disaster. Option D say the amount of time mission business process can be disrupted with causing significant, which is not true. Significant harm to the organization mission that is not true because that is the definition of beyond the MTD. So D removed. C is the definition of RPO. B is the definition of RTO. A is basically the true definition of MTD. that's why the answer is a for alpha okay so i purchase a time from you that i will be resume the service with then that so that is a 4 hour of mtd i take my internal operation team to restore the service in 3 hour that is my rto along with that whatever the accept data loss we have that is also determined by the data owner or system owner so let's move to the next coffee shot <clears throat> which of the following true statement define relation of mtd and rto rto must normally be shorter than mtd which is true a good bcp plan is the one where the rto should be less than mtd option b rto must normally be higher than mtd which is not true rto is more about rpo which is not true rto can exceed the time limit established by mtd which is not possible it is a loss that's why the answer is a for alpha okay let's move to the next coffee shot thank you Which of the following process is the first source for determining the resiliency and contingency planning strategy? I repeat again, which of the following process is the first source for determine the resiliency and contingency planning strategy? Option A, BIA, definitely. Second is recovery strategy, but based on that only we creating a recovery strategy, right? And they talk about input for the contingency planning. So B removed. Contingency solution is the outcome. bcp policy we create in the first stage and question talking first so for determine the resiliency so bia basically the one which determine what is important and based on that we can go for b and c so in this case answer is a for alpha let's move to the next coffee shot thank you so we don't have a coffee shot we have a snacks so here you can see redundant site they have a data they have a server they have a hardware they have a power hot site not real time data but they have a server they have a hardware rack they have a power warm site no data no server only rack and power cold site no data no server no rack only power and water okay so this is all from my side do let me know how do you find this video and do let me know shall i made more coffee shots on the cc exam okay and if you still not subscribe to the channel do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic good day bye